Hey there and welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. Today I have a fun card project for you that has been around but I have never heard of it. So I'm starting with a piece of white daisy cardstock and then we're going to need some post-it removable labeling tape and any stamp set. I'm going to be using this from the Deep Blue stamp set. Um, I have Bluebird and Carolina ink and then I'm going to show you another version of the card after we make this first one together. Now you don't have to use this removable labeling tape. You can use anything to mask. You can use post-its themselves. I have this blending brush that I ordered off of Amazon, so you need some type of blending brush as well. So this is called the Ready Form card, and I saw uh, another YouTuber, Natasha Foote, do this the other day, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's really cool. And so I started to look into it, and it turns out it's been around for a long time. I thought, where the heck have I been? So I don't know if this is new to you guys or not, but uh, it was a lot of fun to make, so I'm going to show you my take on this Ready Form card. So I've masked off a few areas with the labeling tape and I'm just inking around the edges with the Carolina ink. You want to use your lighter shade to ink around the edges here. You can do this with one shade of ink, but I liked it better with um, the lighter and darker. And I'll show you the difference in the end of this video here. So now we're going to just continue to create different angles on this card. So I'm masking off where I've already created a line and now I'm going to use that to make another angled section down below. So there really is no rhyme or reason. You're just creating different sections on your card and I'll show you what we're going to do with those in just a moment. You want to leave a little bit of white space in the center so I'm just again inking around kind of the edges um, so we have the variation of the shading there. So I'm going to create another line going across here and then just one more up here. Mask off that original line so that I don't erase the work I've already done by blending over it. So this is all basically single layer stamping. So for those of you who really like to do that, this is a good card for you. I am going to add my sentiment and kind of pop it up on dimensional foam in the end because I just can't help myself. I like single layer stamping cards. They definitely have their place, but I always like to make things a little fancier. So I'm almost done. I'm just going around the edge and you can see now we have all these cool um, kind of triangle shapes on our card. So now we're going to bring in the blue bird and I'm again using this stamp. There are coordinating thin cuts, but we don't need that for today's project. So I am starting with this beautiful shell and we're going to just continue reusing that um, ma whatever material you're using to mask. And then these are brand new stamps, so I'm just rubbing it on my skin a little bit. This helps condition it. You can rub an eraser over it. Basically, you just want to um, take that shiny, glossy finish off this stamp, and then it's going to season it so it will stamp better. And now we stamped in that section, and we're removing the tape. And now I'm going to mask off another section and then bring in a different stamp. So you want to get those as close to your original line as possible. And I'm just kind of auditioning a few of these shapes and I think the sea turtle is going to look nice in that area. So again, just rubbing it on my arm. It's such a quick and easy way to season the stamps. And then sometimes I like to practice on my printer paper just to see how my image is going to turn out. And then we'll just stamp our little sea turtle there. We're basically creating these little windows or these little vignettes of the images and it just creates this really cool effect in the end. So now I'm using my coral. I'm going to stamp a couple different, you know, areas on that particular panel. So this technique is perfect for any stamp that would have multiple images um, building any particular theme or a scene. I recommend incorporating different size images. So here I'm stamping several starfish in this upper corner and um, they're, you know, tiny as to where like the sea turtle is one large image. And I just think that the contrast adds a lot of interest to the card. 
and different textures and then the coral brings in some different texture and I think that looks really good. So I was thinking about the seahorse there but he's just too big for that area. So I am deciding that this fish is going to work best so I'm going to use him and just get an appropriate size block there. And I like how these cards are monochromatic. You could mix up the colors if you want, but I thought they looked really cool in one color theme. So you wanna press down pretty firmly so that you don't get a white line between your masking element and your stamped image. And I'm adding just a few bubbles going up from the fish there, and we can remove all of our labeling tape now, and we're gonna save this for our sentiment. I'm going to mat this on a piece of sapphire cardstock, so we'll just use some adhesive tape and line this up so we have a nice even margin there. And now we can adhere this to a card base, but first I'm going to add my sentiment. So I have this stamped and um, in Versamark ink and I went ahead and heat embossed it with white embossing powder and I just love this look of the white text on the dark background. It's just a really um, neat look that I tend to gravitate towards. And I wanna dress this up just a bit so I'm cutting a few strands of my silver embellishing thread and I'm going to wrap those around my finger, run a little bit of adhesive tape and then after we've rolled those around our fingers, you know, two or three times, then I recommend pulling the loops so they're kind of staggered and varied in sizes and then we could just adhere that right there. And I'm going to pull some out the bottom and I decide to add one more because it's just not quite enough. So I add another cluster to um, each side there. And now I'm popping this up on foam tape just to give it a little bit of dimension. I do add more silver embellishing thread here in a moment and decide to tuck that into the bottom half of that sentiment. But I'm using our white cards and envelopes value pack, which is an A2 card size already cut and scored ready to go. So it makes it super convenient and fast. And then we have these really cool seashell sequins. And since I use the silver embellishing thread, I just thought a few silver uh, sequin shells would look really pretty to finish this card off. And check that out. I really like the way this turns out. So let me show you another one I did. I've already gone ahead and inked up the background with sage ink, and we're gonna use this Palm Paradise stamp set and see how this one turns out. So I wanna go with a darker shade of green, so I'm gonna use the Evergreen ink. I'm putting a piece of foam behind my card panel so I get nice crisp images, and I've already gone ahead and mounted all my um, stamps onto blocks ready to go. So we're just going to mask these areas off. I'm reusing that same tape and then we can do our stamping. So I'm going to start with this plant stamp here. It's like a palm frond and ink that up really well in my evergreen ink and then we'll just kind of stamp that. And you wanna make sure that it's off of your panel. So you want it, you don't want it to be centered in your panel. You want it to be, you know, go on to the mast area as well. And now for the center, I'm stamping up several of these tiny little um, flower images here. And we're just gonna kind of random stamping them, you know, so they're covering the edges and you can see how that turns out when we remove the tape. And now up in this corner here, I think I'm going to put my parrot. This is a really fun stamp. I actually bought this stamp because my younger son, for it's kind of funny, whenever we go on vacation, he seems to find himself someone with a macaw or some type of parrot, and he runs up and talks to him and just thinks that these birds are the neatest things. So I have all these pictures of him with random birds. So I'm like, I have to have this stamp to document those memories. It's just going to be perfect for that. So we're just about done. I'm going to stamp a couple of these leaves at uh, staggered heights here on this particular panel. And again, I'm gonna save that bottom corner for my sentiment. I'm adhering this one to a piece of black cardstock, and then I'm gonna use my sentiment. Again, I have done white heat embossing on um, black cardstock for this one, so I will add that in just a moment. First, we wanna get this adhered to our card panel. 
Now, just to save time, I love to go through and just make a bunch of sentiments and heat emboss them all at once and just have those in a little cup on my desk. So these, I believe, are both from the Say It In Style stamp set, which is from the core catalog, and it's just a great collection of sentiments that can go for any occasion. Great stamp for your collection. So you can see here, I'm doing the same technique with the embellishing thread, but this time I'm using gold. And I'm not going to use the seashell sequins on this card uh, because it wouldn't make sense. So I'm going to just pull out regular sequins to add to this. I really thought the gold looked nice with the green background, so that turned out really um, pretty. And again, I'm gonna add just some little foam squares that I have to pop up my sentiment and remove the protective backing. And then we can just pop that right into place here. And of course, you can swap out your sentiment to make it fit any occasion. And now I'm gonna add just a little bit of this julep sequins here. These green tones are perfect for this card just to add a little sparkle. And I wanna build a visual triangle. Sometimes it seems like sequins is random, but it is not random. So you definitely wanna place them with purpose. I'm just kind of fussing with them here. I don't like that those are on the same level. So I'm gonna pop this back up towards the top. And you just, you're framing your, you know, whatever it is, your focal point, which in this case is my sentiment. And you want it kind of tied to your embellishment cluster. So I'm gluing these down in a triangular formation and it's just really pleasing to the eye. You can use the white glue or glue dots for adhering the sequins and they both work well. So here are our two finished cards and you can see how this technique works with any stamp. Here's one where I did tone on tone. It was sage on the sage background and, and you, I like the contrast of the darker ink with the lighter ink better. So, but it's your personal preference, but I thought these were really fun to make and I encourage you to give it a try. Let me know. If this is a technique that's new to you, or perhaps you've done this a gazillion times over and I'm the only one that has never heard of it, it's possible. All the supplies I've used are linked in the description box below, or you can check out my blog at craftyconceptswithaaron.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.